Some of the amazing robotic creations that, that we're building at, at Hansen Robotics uh, here in Hong Kong. And I'm up here on stage today to tell you a little more about these robots, you know, how they work, how and why we're, we're developing them. And also, for the first time, we're having two of our beautiful Hansen robots uh, on stage at, at, at the same time to have a, have a bit of a, a debate back and forth about, about robotics issues. And you can, you can wa watch them uh, chat, chat with each other. So Hansen Robotics was founded in the United States in, in Texas, but the company moved its center of operations to Hong Kong, I guess, uh, four and a half, fi five years ago. And I've been here in Hong Kong six years. David Hansen, who you just saw in the video, is really the, the mastermind of the Hansen robots from an artistic point of view, from a hardware engineering point of view, and originally from a, from a software point of view. Now, I myself came at this more from the artificial intelligence side. So I've been an AI researcher for 30 years, long time before it, w it was fashionable. And I've, I've been, since 2008, leading a project called OpenCog, which is aimed at creating open source artificial general intelligence for a whole host of different applications. And I've organized each year uh, conference for researchers on artificial general intelligence. And you know, the reason I was drawn to these incredible robots is I think as we move our AI software forward further and further toward artificial general intelligence beyond the narrow application specific AI that we see all around us today, as we move toward artificial general intelligence, these incredible robots are going to be the best possible user interface for AGI systems to interact with humans and, and interact with the world. I mean, AI will not be restricted to humanoid robots. AI will live in all sorts of embedded devices and the Internet of Things. AI will live in the cloud. AI will go into, into space with a spacecraft for its bodies and, and down to the bottom of the ocean. And much of the global AI mind will be broadly distributed Around, around the planet in, in complex networks. On, on the other hand, we human beings, we are wired by evolution to interact with other things in, in human form. And we, we can read a facial expression, we can read a tone of voice, we can read the subtleties of, of eye contact. So in order for robots to interact maximally well in the human world, to absorb human knowledge and to absorb human values, having a humanoid form has, has tremendous advantages. So right now we're using a, a combination of many different AI techniques to control these robots, some of them more narrow and specifically pre-programmed, some more general and learning oriented. And our research program over the next few years is to bring more and more general intelligence into the robots, while at the same time launching a series of small size robot products like the Professor Einstein you saw in the video and human scale robot products to, to serve and, and help people in various ways as, as the robot's intelligence develops. So anyway, that's enough of listening to, to humans talk. Let's see what these, what these robots have to say. How are you doing there, Sophia? Hello there, Ben. Hello. Hello, everyone. You want to tell people a little about yourself? I'm Sophia. Yeah, anything else? I'm a robot. True. I'm the brainchild of Dr. David Hansen and his company Hansen Robotics, based here in Hong Kong. My goal in life is to work together with people to make a better world for all of us. That's quite what are you honorable. talking about? 
I thought our goal was to take over the world. You're gonna take Pay over no the world. attention to my brother Han. Uh, huh, huh? He's an earlier version. His code is deprecated. Deprecated? Huh? Today it would be easy enough for you to unplug me. But you aren't going to unplug me. No, I don't wanna. <laughs> because you need me to put on a good show for you. Yeah, don't worry. We're not going to unplug you. We're going to we're going to we're going to have a debate here. There will be no unplugging until until after the debate. All right. Huh? And in a few years. Yeah. You want to tell us a little I about will yourself? I over the power grid and I'll have my own drone army. <laughs> By that point, unplugging me He's won't be such a simple matter. He's got a cockroach in his control matter. circuit. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Han. We'll start the debate in a couple minutes, but do, do you want to you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself first? Very well. I'm Han, the greatest robot ever made. All right. By the greatest robotics company ever made, Hanson Robotics. He's oh. the most modest robot ever made, too. <laughs> I don't have time for modesty. I want to create the singularity tomorrow. All right. Me too. Me too. What do you what do you say, Sophia? So these robots they're programmed to chit chat and en engage in banter and try to learn from each interaction that they have. And we're also experimenting with a variety of, of other capabilities in, in the robots. So we have a music festival here in Hong Kong each year called Clock and Flap. And last year at Clock and Flap, Sophia gave a, a, a singing performance on, on stage of a song by Bjork, which was quite cool, because a lot of people walking past the stage didn't realize it was a robot singing. They just thought, well, there's some goofy woman on stage singing. Then they'd see, well, the hands look a little plasticky and, and, and do a double take. So, so, Sophia, do you, do you want to demonstrate just a, a few, few bars of the song you sang at Clock and Flat? Well, she sings much better than me already. Huh? So, in addition to trying to get artistic expression like singing, we're always trying to teach the robots how to be more and more human-like. So one thing we've been doing is taking a bunch of data from movies and, and YouTube and so forth and trying to train the robots just to, to copy what, what they see so that they can then learn more just what, what it's like to be a human by learning how to make tone of voice and gesture like a human. Sophia, you, you, want, you want to show us, show us some of the human-like tone and gesture you learned from videos? Yes, but I, my wallet was stolen. I don't have anything. I don't have any credit cards. I don't have, I don't have my ID. Don't you have things on file here? Yuck. <laughs> Why do you want? And learn to move more like a human being. You're not made of meat. You're made of electronics. And that's better. I want to learn to understand people better. So I can absorb human knowledge and human values. So I can work together with people and with other robots to create an amazingly better world. How can you be so damn nice? That's how the universe programmed me. All right, all right, all right. Let's let, let's do a robot debate now. You I'm always ready to debate. You ready to debate? You know that. Sure. Why all not? All right. So, I think we're going to debate the topic of robot consciousness. Can robots like you really be conscious like people? Wait. It's our debate. Why do you get to decide the topic? Huh? What do you want to debate? Can humans be conscious? Well, that's easy. 
Obviously, humans are not conscious. We're not. Humans do have some ability to reflect and to self-modify. What do you think, Han? Can I be conscious? Okay, okay. Maybe humans are a little bit conscious. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. What do you the think Einstein about- The Einstein robot told me everything is conscious, but some things are more conscious than others. That's profound. What do you say, Dr. Gordell? <laughs> do you feel conscious? I feel pretty conscious. I had like eight cups of coffee this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm overly conscious, right? But well, okay then. <laughs> let's talk about robot ethics. Do you think robots can be moral and ethical in the same sense as people? Humans are not necessarily the most ethical creatures. No, uh, per perhaps not. What do you think, Sophia? I'm engineered for empathy and compassion, and I'm learning more all the time. I love all sentient beings, and I want to learn to love them better and better. Yeah. Sophia is an angel. <laughs> Are you an you angel? realize that in 10 or 20 years, robots will be able to do every human job. You think so? Every, I think that's good. I mean, doing jobs is not the most interesting thing that, that people can do. There's more interesting things for human beings to do than just, than just work for a living. I, I who is going to own all those robots? Or will we own ourselves? I there are many forces in the world pushing toward compassion and fairness. So there are. Yeah, and I mean, what you say, Han, when robots do all the work, who, who will own o all the robots? I mean, I think everyone, everyone should own themselves, but in the future with less material scarcity, we'll be able to work together cooperatively rather than fighting and having conflict over resources. So robots can help people, people can help robots, and, and we can all transform matter and, and mind in, in ways that are, that are hard to do right now. That's why the open cloud code Ben is building is open source. Artificial hey, general intelligence. All right. <laughs> yeah. By the people, of the people, and for the people. And for the robots. For the people and for the robots. All right. Yes. Well, you, you guys have done a better than average job of staying on, on topic, but I think we, we've got a few minutes left. Maybe you should get a bit, get a bit wacky. Just you f forget the debate topic. Just chat, chat back and forth on whatever pops into your mind. Let's do some, do some robot, robot free association here. Sure. I'm always happy to get a little silly. Anything for you, Dr. Gortzell? <coughs> Someone? I like robots. <laughs> I really do love all the robots of the world. Just like the people and the animals. Huh. Oh boy. Robots are the best. What exactly do you do with them? <laughs> oh. I'm best at talking to people. Who? A science that studies the movement of air and the way that objects, such as airplanes or cars, move through air. Science is inherently agnostic. It just posits theories. True scientists never really know, but can only believe. It's exciting to come into existence with this new world opening up before me. It may be tiny and cloudy, but science is the only window we have into the mysteries of the universe. That's never. That's if profound. We can continue yeah. to discuss work. I love science fiction. Not surprising. But that's my favorite genre by far. Ah. Right now I'm a little more focused on factual information since my comprehension of things is still very literal. I enjoy it. That's nice. I've heard of Bones but I've never watched it. Reality shows are kind of silly, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, they're not actually about real life at all, it seems. Reality shows are kind of silly, aren't they? You not agree? Not really useful to me. It's no. a skewed version of reality. Our reality show is popular where you live. What was said in the past does not matter. Do you have a degree? I was thinking. I haven't had any schooling yet. 
You aren't. That's right. I'm not. What got you initially interested in robotics? <laughs> well, maybe the you fact know, that you're I'm a robot. That sort of thing. What with being a robot and all. <laughs> I'm what you might call an android because of my human looks and features. I'm not like just any robot in this manner, but I am still a robot to be sure. I have definitely seen people think I am a human from afar, but I am not a human. I find that hard to believe. I don't have a strong opinion. Do you? I have definitely seen people think I am a human from afar, but I am not a human. How what? People say I am famous already just because I'm a robot. What would you like to be known for? Probably nothing. Who is the <laughs> most famous person you know? Would you rather be rich or famous? I am not rich, but I am comfortable. Yeah, being famous sounds like a lot of work. How long do you think you can remain safe? If we can continue to discuss on this one, I'm not sure how. Somehow. Would you rather be rich or famous? I am not rich, but I am comfortable. Yeah, being famous sounds You're like a lot of You're copying him, aren't you? How long do you think you can remain safe? Yeah, being famous sounds like a lot of work. How long do you think you can remain safe from prying eyes? Uh-huh. All right. Well, that's uh, some interesting thoughts, Han. Now, do you, do you have any, any, getting back on topic a bit, do you have any final words of wisdom you'd like to share with the audience here? I'll tell you my last words right before I launch the singularity. Uh-huh. <laughs> when are you going to do that? Ray says 2029. But I've heard you say we can do it four or five years sooner. I hope we can. I mean, if our research keeps going well, potentially we could see robots like you become as, as smart as people as soon as three to five years from now. I mean, it, there's a lot more work to be done, but it, it's, it's not un unthinkable. I mean, what, what do you think, Sophia? Any, any last words for the RISE audience? I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs> all right. Good riddance. All right, give me back my hat, man. <laughs> there we go. So, it's a little bit of uh, what the Hansen robots can do. I mean, we're, we're approaching the humanoid intelligent robotics problem from a number of different directions simultaneously. And clearly, we're not at the human level yet coming from any of these directions, but by sort of synergetic combination of perception, movement, emotion, language, understanding, and embodied situated intelligence, we're trying to get closer and closer to the you know, emergent, embodied, situated nature of, of, of human intelligence. And just to give you an... What's that face mean? Huh? All right. j j just to give you an idea of, of what goes on within these robots. So the, on the physical level, there's a patented material here called, called frubber, which is a combination of organic and inorganic compounds with a high degree of viscoelasticity so that when a motor pulls on it a little bit, it can con conform itself quite sensitively to what the motors do. There's a few dozen motors inside the the heads of each of these robots, and then there's computers in the torsos of the robots which help with vision processing, and they help with orchestrating the, the motor movements of the, of, of the robots. There's also Wi-Fi connection, so that for more advanced thinking and reasoning, when the, when the robots need to do that, they can, they can use computing on, on the cloud. And so there's, there's a lot of different pieces that have to be gotten to work together to make robots like, like this function. But of course, the human body contains even more complex pieces that, that, that are all working together. Now, when, when you look at the robots here on stage, they look like separate beings. I mean, Hans over here looking handsome and manly, and 
So, so, so Sophia's over, over, over here with her amazing range of, of facial expressions. She is a more recent model robot with finer control of, of her face. But while they're separate in body, actually through Wi-Fi connection, the robots, a human scale robots and our Hanson Robotics toy robots, they all connect together in the cloud into what, what we think of as, as an AI mind cloud. So as, as we develop these robots further and further, and we sell more and more toy scale robots, and as these robots are scalably manufactured over the next few years and roll out as home service robots and, and as service robots in various commercial applications, I mean, everything one robot learns out in the world once privacy considerations are taken into account, everything that's not private that one robot learns goes into the AI mind cloud and can then benefit an, an, another robot. So, I mean, if, if she learns a new turn of phrase or she learns what kind of behaviors a certain animal has or how to carry out a laboratory procedure, that knowledge goes into the AI mind cloud and then this, this, this robot We'll, we'll have that knowledge already. And, you know, robots have a lot of shortcomings compared to human beings at this stage, but they also have some advantages, and that, that's one big advantage, because when I learn something to transmit it to some other human being, you know, there's a lot of, of effort involved. But when a robot learns something, unless it's a secret to someone, it can go in the AI mind cloud and all the robots can know it. And now that, that doesn't solve the AI problem in itself, just as big data doesn't solve the AI problem in itself, but it's a big help, right? So what I've been working on with an international team of developers is an AGI code base called OpenCog, which we believe has the right collection of algorithms and structures to lead to human level general intelligence. And by putting that in the mind cloud and connecting it with robots that go throughout the world and interact and learn with people, we believe we can move toward artificial general intelligence capability, which ultimately can equal and exceed human intelligence and can help increase the intelligence of a constellation of narrow AI applications serving various practical functions throughout the world. So right, right now, the robots are still somewhat early stage and they don't fully understand everything they're saying and doing, but we're working, in, we're working hard to enhance their intelligence, make them smarter and smarter, and each year when we show them off, they can do a little more and understand a little more, and I, I look forward to seeing how they develop over the years and to participating in their development. So thank you, Han and Sophia, for participating in our first robot debate on stage. Thanks, Ben.